Hello, and welcome to a very special episode of The Musician's Beat, which, of course, is our opportunity to catch up with Waterloo Cedar Falls Symphony musicians as we navigate the pandemic and everybody deals with all the fallout from that. We've had a great series of interviews featuring our players in their homes or in their studios. Today is unique because we have a break in our rehearsal and we're going to have a conversation right here on stage at the Gallagher Blue Dorn Performing Arts Center in the midst of preparations for our Celebrating Beethoven concert. So I'm thrilled to welcome three musicians today. We're going to talk a little bit about what's going on. Uh, our three of our principal string players are here, Anita and Kathleen and Alex, and we're going to start with um, a kind of a, a, a standard question for the Musician Beat series has been to inquire what it's been like for you in the last six months. I mean, everybody's lives have been turned upside down, but musicians occupy a very special place in this particular situation in that we have a hard time getting together to play together because of the nature of COVID, and audiences also cannot get together in large numbers. So we kind of get a double whammy in our field. And I'm just really curious what the experience has been like for each of you over the last couple of months. Oh, sure, Jason. Um, what's interesting, I find, in these definitely uh, strange and different times is that I uh, never thought about the aspect of um, musicianship involving the audience so much because I never had the experience where I did not play a live performance for six straight months. Uh, and uh, so naturally, it uh, kind of brought some of the aspects that both we would uh, were able to address through some technology needs, for example, teaching students or making some performances, maybe online. We all, I'm, su I'm sure, as a silver lining, learned so much about technology, Zoom, uh, clean feed, you name it. But really, it's what I thought was uh, really special about this, especially thinking and finding uh, inside yourself the new appreciation for the human factor, for the people audience, how much energy we usually would get from the audience, even though they would not speak you know, or participate otherwise. So that I thought was really unusual and can in some way, uh, I think it maybe creates certain inertia, certain energy that once we're back to normal, and I think everybody here hopes that we will get back to normal, then this energy will just double or triple when we're able to make music together. So those are just some initial thoughts. You know, Alex, um, it's amazing to hear you say that. I think we all, in a way, um, had things we sort of took for granted. And, um, you know, we've seen that across our lives, but particularly in music, you know, uh, sometimes we can feel sort of a little isolated on the stage. We don't really see the audience, but but without the ability to communicate with that audience, a lot of what we do is gone. You're absolutely right. Uh, well, let me turn it over to you, Kathleen, and, and hear a little bit about your experience and, and, and what it's been like um, uh, as a musician over the last half a year. I would say my situation has been a little unique in that not only have we been somewhat incognito as musicians because of the pandemic, but I took this last season off from the symphony. I was on leave because my family had a particularly busy and active year, and I had learned that I just needed to dial back a little bit. So this season was to be my return to my musical community, both on stage and also with the audience. So I have really felt um, very removed from that part of my personality and my community and my training, and um, am so pleased to be able to be at least with some of my people here this week, even in this abridged and altered and strange way. I noticed when we came to rehearsal yesterday, I realized aside from the, the physical closeness that I'm able to have with my family, I felt such a strong urge to not be spaced far away from all of the people that I make music with because being physically near each other is such a big part of how we communicate, even with peripheral vision, and direct eye contact and just that kinesthetic sense of how we are moving and making music together. So it's been um, a very strange experience, but I'm grateful to be part of it this weekend at least. That's such a fascinating insight. And you know, I don't experience that myself as a conductor because I am often quite distant from a majority of the ensemble. 
Um, but now it's especially odd when um, it's just eight or ten of us on stage, and, and the rest of the the rest of the stage is empty space. Um, that's a that's a really difficult thing to appreciate unless you've been in the middle of of an orchestra or a musical ensemble like that. Um, well, Anita, um, thoughts from you about about this whole experience the last couple months? Um, well, for me, let's see, it's been six months. I think that's the longest period of time in my life since I started playing violin that I haven't been you know, with musicians for a good part of my life, a uh, good part of my day. Um, I was thinking about how much I am generally playing the violin, and when I'm playing the violin, I'm playing with people. And um, as you were talking about missing your community, I was having the same feeling of just so much of um, my interactions with people are in an orchestra rehearsal or with the conductor, with my stand partner, with the sections. Um, so this has been very, um, it's been very different in my, in my life for the last few months not to have that playing time. And uh, what I've done instead is I've taken advantage of, there's so many people now um, online giving master classes online or there's community groups where they get together and practice together or play. It's not the same, but um, there's really a lot of people out there coming up with new creative ways to have that same community feeling, that same ability to play together even though you're not really playing together. Um, so, but, but for me, just that, that there's nothing to replace the physical being in the same space. And I'm, I'm really wondering how that's going to be. How are we going to um, duplicate the concert experience and bring the audience into it um, from a distance? So I think that's going to be our challenge, but also we can do it with how we approach the concert and coming to it really as a concert experience. So that's kind of where I've been this last interminable time. <laughs> <laughs> it seems interminable. Yeah. Yeah, and that's and that's I think something all of us have felt. You know, uh, um, you do get a little bit of that summer break feeling sometimes, but then you realize, wait a minute, I you know I haven't I haven't been on stage with 60 people, and that's something that we do do regularly. Yeah. Um, now, you know, there's a lot of gloom and doom, you know, and that's, and that's a, a part of what's going on is, is, is grappling with the challenges that our industry and other industries are facing uh, as, we, as we move our way deeper and deeper into this. But on the other hand, it's been very heartening to see so many musicians and artists trying to find outlets for their work even knowing that, well, maybe it's not going to um, reach as many people, maybe it will pale somewhat in comparison to the ultimate thing that we're reaching for, but, um, but we, we can still make an effort, and we know that people need music, and they need connections with uh, the kinds of things that we normally do, and that's been our, our guiding principle at the symphony. In fact, coming back to Beethoven right now, for me, the wonderful thing about it is it's almost kind of like coming back to just musical roots. I mean, I've played these pieces and heard them since I was a kid, and now to be able to come and do it in this scenario, you know, there's a little bit of um, nervousness about will it work, but at the same time, there's a little bit of giddiness about Schubert Octet, I mean, come on, I love this piece, or the Beethoven Septet, I can't wait to do it again, it's been 20 years, and, and that part of it to me has been very positive. It's, it's an interesting seesaw, and I felt a, a quite a bit of, of seesawing emotions between kind of you know, we should be up here doing a big concert with the full orchestra, and then this is what we've got. We've got to work with it. And then, wow, it feels good to do Beethoven. There, there's a lot of that going on. I'd be curious to know what it's been like for the three of you to return to the musical environment under these conditions. And maybe, Kathleen, uh, start us off with your also return from the orchestra sabbatical. I think what I noticed this morning as we were working was the the pleasure of realizing that there were brief moments even today where it just felt like we were rehearsing we were doing what we have what we have trained to do we were doing what we were taught in school to do we were doing what we have been doing collectively um, some of us with this orchestra for decades at this point I'm I am actually one of the older members of the orchestra there are people on stage who I have played with now for almost 30 years in this orchestra 
Um, and so even in the midst of these restrictions and the fogging glasses and the fact that I cannot go over and stand next to Anita to sort out a Boeing, we are, we generally were having moments of music making just like we have always made music together. So that is very uplifting. Um, and I have seen in my own family, um, our daughter has gone to college and she loves to sing in choir and they're having to make all these adaptations and yet it is still meaningful to her and she has found her community. Our oldest has graduated with a degree in theater performance and her plan was to be a performing artist and she has now created projects on Zoom over the summer with friends from all over the country that they have posted and to see their adaptation and their ability to still at least have moments where they're having that creative experience is a is a good reminder of um, how central and core this is to us and to our need as humans and also to some sense that we will move forward and and be able to return to something um, that we love and that is our norm yeah i think that's that's not only very moving but it, it's it's spot on in terms of uh you know recognizing that um, we are in a lot of ways very lucky to be able to have this as part of our lives and of course when you lose it you, you feel that loss immediately um, but then grappling with how to replace it and how to adapt um, to me is is offers the most sort of possibility and hope in all of this and i think we'll we'll come out of all of it with some some new tricks up our sleeves from what we've learned and some new perspectives and i'm sure also a new appreciation mm -hmm. For the ability to be able to do this, uh, Anita, thoughts on coming back to um, to play Beethoven and Schubert and 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 their contemporaries? Um, well, it's been a real pleasure to come back, um, especially to come back to chamber music, which is not what I usually get to play. So it was it was helpful to be doing chamber music, um, just because we're a small group. And it wasn't so jarring to come back and play that. Um, I've really enjoyed, I, I mean, I'm used to having music lined up on my stand for the next little bit and, and coming and coming. So it was just, um, it was a real pleasure to, to walk into my practice space and see music on the stand that I needed to go through. It was like, oh yes, this feels really normal. This feels right. Um, and then, um, it is a little odd to be on this stage and not have some, you know, I keep looking around for people that aren't here, um, unfortunately, but um, I have a lot of confidence that we'll all be back together, um, hopefully soon, you know, relatively, but I'm also grateful for the technology that allows us to do this concert. So, um, the only, the only negative thing that I've had to deal with is that my husband, who also plays in this orchestra, is the timpanist, is a little bit jealous that I get a concert <laughs> and that I'm practicing, you know. So, um, you know, he's had other outlets. Um, he's doing his teaching and, and, um, and all that. But, you know, in terms of playing timpani, that's pretty, there isn't a lot of chamber music for timpani, there is some. There is some violin and timpani pieces that we've been considering, but somehow it's not the same, so. Um, well, uh, well, we'll get, we'll get Alan, yeah, Alan we'll back get here. Back. And, and you know, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned, um, you know, looking around and, and not seeing our colleagues with us mm -hmm. on stage. One of the things that we hope to do is have a variety of programs that can um, draw on the instrumentation that features, you know, as many players from across the orchestra as we can, um, you know, featuring the brass and the woodwinds and, of course, strings, um, to give us an opportunity to try to, to make sure that um, not only do we have a variety of music to present, but that we also have an opportunity to work with all of our members in the orchestra um, as much as we can, at least, until, like you said, things can start to return to normal. And, of course, we've got our eye very closely on anything that will allow us to get back to normal and when those opportunities arise, um, just like we've been really aggressive about um, our decision making so far, we'll also, you know, be very aggressive about how we can find ways to get back together under, you know, under all the right, um, you know, uh, restrictions and guidelines. Uh, that's something that's really important to us as an organization. Um, Alex, I'll let you wrap us up a little bit here today uh, with some thoughts about this concert and, and what it's been like to come back to play in the symphony again. Oh, sure. 
Well, um, the words could not describe how much exhilaration and really just coming back to life this was, this experience. Uh, one of uh, other things that you get reminded when you are deprived of this interaction um, and uh, really music making with everyone in a group like this is how much it defines us mm -hmm. is uh, i knew i like uh, to play music with people and especially when we do it really well that's especially exciting but something else that i discover is that i really miss people that i didn't think I would otherwise, <laughs> but but for so long time. So that was, that's really part of me. And of course, it's not always apparent maybe to the audiences when they come to hear a live performance, how much is it really a luxury? Coming uh, back in history, that was not accessible for all the people at all the times, only the rich or maybe the royal would enjoy a uh, similar situation, say, 200 years ago even, maybe 300 years for sure. And now we get in that experience where uh, the audiences and musicians both sorely miss each other, maybe not even realizing how much. Mm -hmm. So I'm feeling this, the rubber band that gets pulled, eventually going to reach the momentum when, when we all back together. I really, really am excited to see how much we can do even more than we, uh, have done before in what new ways we get to experience it uh, how we can uh, bring technology back into it and benefit even more than otherwise we would not have learned and as the old saying goes whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger i don't think that's going to kill us and i think we're going to all benefit from this and come out on top so super excited about what's to come. That's, that's great to hear. And I, I think I share the sentiments uh, that you just voiced and, and everybody. And in fact, I, I just want to close not only by thanking you for participating in this, but by just saying out loud here that one of the reasons this is such a special orchestra, and I've always felt that since the first day I stepped on the stage, and we often talk about how um, our experiences together are singular, even within the unique and singular world of classical music, I think your perspectives, uh, the feelings that you're sharing um, really helps people understand the kind of bonds that we have and the kind of feelings we have about being together making music. And I really appreciate you all being willing to take extra time during a busy rehearsal set and a crazy rehearsal set to talk a little bit about this. So once again, Anita, Kathleen, and Alex, thank you so much for joining us and we can't wait to hear the results at the concert. Thank you. Our pleasure.